mm-hmm. decorative jamasters. We can make life as difficult as we want or as blissful, simple, inspiring, challenging, beautiful as we want. It is not the outside that determines that. I know that's very, very hard for people to believe and understand because of all the things that are going on outside. But those are outside. You live inside, period. You're in here, not out there. How do we know that? Science taught us that. What do you mean? You're not looking outside. The outside is coming into you. We've been through that numerous times. You're not looking out there. Light is bouncing off of out there and coming in through your light-sensitive cells and passing up your optic nerves and stimulating the brain and then rendering the view like it renders on your flat screen TV, rendering what's coming in from outside inside. When you're watching a ball game on TV in San Francisco and you're here, you're not in San Francisco. You're not really watching the ball game. I'm sorry, you didn't watch the Super Bowl. A camera picked it up where it was playing out there and sent it in from Arizona, I think they played, and sent it in and up to the satellites. Not you, not your eyeballs, not any part of you at all. Just light signals, electronic signals and digital nowadays got sent up there and then bounced back and got sent through all the wires and all the satellites and everything and then ended up on your flat screen TV, which has this ability to decode those digital signals and make them look like what was going on out there. That's what's happening inside of you. You don't know that. You say you do, but you don't know that. You honestly think you're looking at me. You're not looking at me. Light is bouncing off of the atoms and molecules that make up my body, but they're not bouncing off of the air that is on both sides of my body. So the part that bounces off gets picked up by your eyes. The part that doesn't bounce off doesn't get picked up by your eyes because it doesn't bounce off. And then your mind paints the picture, just like your flat screen TV. And who sees that? Does the picture see itself? I'll turn your TV on and have it watch itself. No. Consciousness is looking at what's rendered in your mind. So the point is, are you conscious? Are you aware of what you're looking at? Are you aware if you touch your hand, are you aware that you feel it? Who's aware? That's the beginning and end of all spirituality. There's nothing complicated about that. Are you aware out here on your toe? No, you're aware of your toe. From where? In here. You're always in here. You have never come out ever. No one has ever come out. You live in here. So basically, like I told you, yes, there's lots of things that go on in the outside world. You don't need to tell me about it. I'm well aware of it. You could tell me your story. I'm sure there are lots of things. Listen to me. I am positive that there are lots of things that happen in your life that are terrible. They're not fair. They're not just. It shouldn't have happened to you. It shouldn't happen to anybody. Everybody has a story. There's almost 9 billion of us now, 8.5, 9 billion of us on the planet, alive today. Every one of them have a story, just like yours. Not exactly like yours, but it's a story. The story of what? The events that unfolded in front of them every moment of their life. That's their story. Yours is different. Why? Well, because different events unfold in front of you. That's all that's happening. Events are unfolding on the planet Earth. There are events unfolding every single place in the universe at every moment, aren't there? And always have been for 13.8 billion years. On the planet, 4.8 billion years, there's been something going on on every single spot on the planet. Have you seen it all? You don't even see it all now. Forget 4.5 billion years. It's a happening place. (laughs) There were dinosaurs. There are volcanoes. There are hurricanes and tornadoes. There are bad people and good people. There are animals that bite and animals that purr. Yes or no? There's everything. That's what's meant by the yin and the yang. There's just everything. I don't know what to tell you. I didn't make it, all right? But you didn't either. It's the way it is. And it's kind of neat. Go to Mars and see how long before you get bored. Go to any planet. Go to anything we've seen with the James Webb or the Hubble and show me anything going on other than galaxies colliding with each other and burning stars, right? That's what's going on out there. And then here, 
there's birds and snakes and people and things and words and brains and rocket ships and computers that fit in your pocket. Has anyone noticed? It's a happening place. So things go on everywhere, every moment. You don't see them. You don't experience them. You only experience what's in front of you. How big is that compared to everything? Why won't you think like this? Because I'm teaching you how to make life beautiful. Because you make it terrible. It is neither beautiful nor terrible. It just is. As a Zen saying, the flowers are red, the water's blue, the grass is green. Go home, grasshopper. <laughs> You've received the teachings. Those are the teachings. No, excuse me, Master Sinjay. Why are the flowers red? Why is not the water red? Go home. <laughs> and don't come back till you understand that flowers are red, water is blue, and grass is green. There's no why. It is. You can study why. Science will show you why. It is because of all the factors and causes that happen throughout time and space that made it be that way. Go study them if you want. Or just appreciate the red flower, appreciate the blue water, and appreciate the green grass. It's up to you. The point is, it is the way it is because of all the things that made it be that way. What does science study? What does meteorology study? You sit there and say, why did I have to rain on my birthday? They don't say that. There's nothing in the meteorology book that talks about your birthday. They sit there and look at low pressures and high pressures and wind currents and the temperature of the ocean. I look at a lot of really interesting things. And they do a pretty good job of predicting the weather. Not perfect, but a pretty good job. It has nothing to do with your birthday. It has nothing to do with your day off. It has nothing to do with the fact that you wanted to go camping, does it? I'm trying to show you why you make life hell. You do. You suffer. You suffer because it rained when you wanted to go camping. You did that. The rain did not do that. Things just are what they are because of all the forces that made them be the way they are. Do you understand that? Now, you said yes. Do you like that? No, I don't like it. That's the problem. You are out of harmony with reality. Reality is this is unfolding. There it is. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it just? Is it fair? It just is. So then what went wrong? What happens? Your consciousness, which for right now, but it won't be when we're done, is locked inside of your mind your heart, your body, and what comes in through your senses. Therefore, you only experience what is in front of you. That's what you've experienced. It could be a book, that's in front of you. It could be a movie, that's in front of you. It could be a person, that's in front of you. Whatever's in front of you is all you've ever experienced. Do you understand how small that is in relationship to what is? That you've only experienced the minuscule moment that's in front of you and missed every single other moment that's everywhere. I like statistics when I went to school. And they had this term. It was called statistically insignificant. You ever heard it? Mm -hmm. right. That's what's in front of you. <laughs> and that's what always has been in front of you. That which is statistically... It doesn't even deserve to be called statistically insignificant. It's nothing compared to what is. So what you've experienced is nothing. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm trying to tell the truth. What you have experienced throughout your entire life is nothing compared to what is. It's not even point oh 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 raised to the minus billion, is it? And you think you know something. And you think you're important. Can I talk about that? <laughs> Do you think you're important? Okay, so you are one of 8.5 billion people sitting on the planet Earth. They're the same as you. They're breathing, living, have thoughts, okay? They just had different experiences, therefore they have different thoughts than you. Can anybody buy that? Not right, not wrong. Reality. Because they had different experiences, they have different thoughts. Because your thoughts are made up of your experiences. All right, so now we can accept that there's 8.5 billion of you, and you're one of 8.5 billion. That's not a very big fraction. And what does that mean to be one of 8.5 billion? How much space do you take up at any given moment on the planet Earth? What percentage of the planet Earth is your space taking up? 
That's so small, it's ridiculous. I told you, I can't help myself, I'm addicted. Take that small amount of space that you're taking up every moment, which is like nothing, and understand that 1.3 million planet Earths fit inside the sun. Listen to me. Now you take your little space on this ball of dirt and then say 1.3 billion of those balls of dirt fit inside the sun. How big you feel nowadays? I'm telling you, there are no problems. You are making the problems. This is reality. You're standing on a planet of which 1.3 billion fit inside one star, of which there are 300 billion stars in your galaxy. How important are you? (laughs) I haven't finished. (laughs) I know you won't do it with me. I do it all the time. Your galaxy, which is 300 billion stars, of which your sun is one, and your Earth, 1.3 million fit inside that, your galaxy is one of two trillion galaxies. What are you doing? (laughs) There. Now you can go home. (laughs) No, I'm, I'm serious. I'm asking, what are you doing? What are you doing? And why are you doing it? You're sitting on a little planet, spinning through space, having experiences. And you won't be here very long. Who's going to take that? Earth's been here for 4.5 billion. How long are you going to be here? How many billion? (laughs) How many millions? How many thousands? How many hundreds? No, 80, 90. That's kind of what's going on around here. right? And you can't handle it. You can't handle that experience that I just spent this time painting for you. That's why you're not okay. You're not not okay because of what happened. Things happen everywhere. But you're not okay because you couldn't handle what happened. Why? I ask you a question. Most of these things that happen in front of you that you couldn't handle didn't last very long. There weren't a major percentage of every breath you've taken in your life. You know, something happened. Things happened. I told you. I gave that to you. I'm not taking it away from you. Yes, terrible things happen. Things that come in. What does that mean? Terrible things happen. Things you don't want to happen. What if you're married to somebody and you're a Catholic and you get divorced and he's the biggest schnook that ever walked the face of the earth. Boy, that I pick wrong. And it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible. And you come home one day and there's a note. Dear Sally, he used to be Dear John. Dear Sally, I'm leaving. I've had enough of this. How you doing? Happy as a lark. I can't believe it. They say, God's grace. I didn't have to get divorced. He left. Right or wrong? Right? What if you didn't have any ideas that it was going on and all of a sudden somebody leaves? Ah! Who decided? You did. You decide. Life is unfolding in front of you. Not a lot of life, just a little piece. Either you like it, you don't like it, or it just passes through. What percentage, I'm going to play with you, what percentage of your life, I'm talking, come on, your whole life, the moments I'm falling in front of you, baby, all the way up to where you are now, there are moments I'm falling in front of you. What percentage of the ones that unfold in front of you go right through, have always just gone right through? 99.9. The trees, the cars, the people you don't know, the grass, the clouds, the if somebody yelled at you, you're freaking out. There was a lot of other things going on in your frame of reference. You know, there was a building, there was a car, there was a floor, there was furniture. They went right through, didn't they? Please listen to me. I'm teaching you how to be free. This is not some science stupid talk. This is reality. Why did those go through and the thing that bothered you, which is still bothering you 20 years later, why did they go through and that one thing didn't? Because you stopped it. They're all just passing through. Right? When you watch your flat screen TV, I hope that it keeps passing through. You know, there's something that gets stuck there while you're trying to watch something else. Listen to me. How would you like to watch TV that the show you just were watching, the newscaster, and now you're watching a movie and he's still there? That'd be terrible. That's what you've done. It's all coming in. Did it stay? No, it passed. Did it stay inside of you? Not everything didn't. 99.9% went right through. But the pixels that made up what you didn't like, they didn't go through. And they're still there. How did that happen? You did it. Now where I started. Life can be beautiful 
or life can be terrible. Who decides? You. You did it. You said, no, no, I'm in here, and that ain't coming in here. No way on my watch that that happened. It did happen, or it wouldn't be in there. I want to make this distinction between out there and in here. So out there it happened. Your senses picked it up. If they didn't, there's not a problem with it. If you happen to be looking to the left and you didn't see what happened, you didn't see a snake, you don't have a problem with snakes. Right? But, ah! <laughs> and so you stopped it from passing through. I, I'm going slow. I don't usually go slow. Do you understand how important this is? This is teaching you how to be free. This is teaching you why every problem you have in your entire life is still there. You did it. It doesn't stop by itself. It passes right through. The person standing next to you didn't have a problem with it, with your husband leaving you. I <laughs> understand the problem. I'm not bothered by it. You, when it comes in, you can't stop the event from having happened. No one has ever stopped an event that actually happened from not having happened, have they? This is acceptance. What? You have no choice. <laughs> well, you have a choice. You have to accept that it happened, but you don't want to accept that it's inside. So once it comes inside, and you're inside, we talked about that, your consciousness is inside, it comes in, no, that doesn't feel good. Ever had anything come inside that doesn't feel good? Have anybody ever had anything come inside that doesn't feel good when it comes inside? What does that mean? It goes, it gets like all weird, doesn't it? The inside gets all shook up and weird and freaky. Yes or no? Come on, we all know about that, don't we? All right. So there it is. Something happened. It came in, and it didn't feel good when it came in. What did you do about it? Sorry, I just have to lay the groundwork. If you want to be free, you have to understand why you're not free. It's not enough to say, I want to be free. You have to understand why you're not free. And get rid of why you're not free, then you'll be free. You can't have reasons that you're not free and then decide to be free without getting rid of the reasons. That's what the Buddhists mean by work at the root. There's a reason you're not free. Let's work with that reason. Then we'll be free. So it came in. It was freaky. And you did what? Well, it turns out that you in there are not passive. You have power in there. You have this power called willpower. You can do things in there. You can push things away. You can hold on to things, can't you? So this power of will which I discuss in great detail in the new book, Living on Tether, where it comes from and what it is. My God, it's running your whole life. How do you not know these things? When in school did they teach you about willpower? When in school did they teach that you're in there? Unless you took transpersonal psychology or something. Nobody talks about you being in there. They just try to shove thoughts in there. Think this way, think this way, think this way. You're wrong. Don't think that way. You're wrong. Okay? I'm in here. I have power. If I experience something and it is not comfortable to me, I push it away. Just like if something outside, something throws a ball at you, you defend yourself, you protect yourself, you push it away. You do that inside, don't you? All the time, by the way. Not just with the really big things. You do it with lots of little things all day. We'll talk about that. All right, so you push it away. I asked it a million times. I ask you when I get to this point, where do you think it goes? Where do you think it goes if you push it away? You think it just disappears? Oh, it's gone. Well, how come it keeps coming back? How come your dreams have it in it? It does come back, doesn't it? Something reminds you of it. Somebody says something. You see something that reminds you of it. You see the restaurant that you used to eat at with your ex-boyfriend that you love so much and he left you. And I don't, I don't want to drive down that road anymore. So I don't know if it's still in there. Come on, you're smart people. I'm just asking you to use your wisdom, your intelligence to free yourself. You do want to be free, don't you? You do want to feel love and inspiration and joy every moment of your life, don't you? How can you if you're doing this? So if you store every single thing that ever bothered you inside of you, and you do, you're going to be bothered. Are you bothered? Relative, you say, I'm doing okay today. No, I don't. <laughs> I'll be okay if he says yes. If she says yes. No, that's not what it means to be okay. That's what it means to be not okay, but you need something to help you do better. But the starting position, I'm not Okay. I'm scared, I got hurt, I got problems, etc., etc., etc. I stored this stuff inside of me. Do you understand? If you store everything that ever bothered you inside of you, you're going to be bothered. And then what's going to happen is you're going to think, how do I feel better? I'm bothered, how do I feel better? 
I need to find somebody else. I need to go on a vacation. I need to do this. I need to eat something. I need to do some drug. I need to have a drink. When I get home, just just a little, little take the edge off. There's no edges in there. All right? But you hear what I'm saying. That's what it means to not be okay. You try to do something to make you be okay. I want to talk about how to be okay. I don't talk about all the crazy things you do to compensate for the fact that you're not okay. I just showed you why you're not okay. You're not okay because you stored everything that ever bothered you inside of you. How do you expect it to be? I always use these simple examples because no one will realize that these parts of your life that seem so minor and insignificant are significant. Who has ever had a problem with the driver in front of them? (laughs) Who has ever talked to the driver in front of them? (laughs) What is that? Of what use is that? Of what benefit is that? What good does that do? You have decided to bother yourself about the driver in front of you. Therefore, when you get to work, you'll be bothered. You can tell people about it. Oh, man, it was ridiculous. The drive to work is crazy. The driver starts so slow. Then you just blink around. What do you just do? He's had a moment in front of you on the planet Earth that you couldn't handle. That's a big moment, isn't it? He didn't use his blinkers. You're supposed to be in the right lane. You're bothering yourself all the time. If you want to be free, this is how you learn to be free. Not to go somewhere or change this or do that. You have to stop bothering yourself. If you stop bothering yourself, you won't be as bothered. Remember I started this. Life can be beautiful, inspiring, overwhelming, filled with love and joy, or it can be terrible. It can be just suffering and so on. Who decides? You do. You want to say, but the outside. Yes, the outside. I gave that to you, didn't I? I started right off. You can't say it to me. I gave you everything that happens outside. Terrible, terrible, amazingly terrible things happen outside. And really beautiful things happen outside. And very neutral things. Most of them are neutral. They pass right. I told you that. 9.9 just passed right through. There. That's what it means to experience life. Isn't it? You know what But why does it have to be that way? I told you because all the forces that ever were came together and brought you the moment in front of you. If somebody's... Let's get a little more serious. Somebody always tells that. Oh, you only do drivers in front of you in weather. No, let's do something serious. Somebody's yelling at you. Ever been yelled at? Somebody's yelling at you. How you doing? How how you doing? It's over. Okay? And you extrapolate it. Nobody likes me. He's telling the truth. No wonder he's yelling at me. I always knew no one liked me. Boy, you make hell out of stuff, don't you? You did that. Why is that person yelling at you? I've learned something in my life. They're not yelling at you. They're just yelling. There's a reason they're yelling. You are such a minor part of their life. Are you kidding me? They were born, they had a childhood, they had parents that treated them a certain way. There's just so many things that have happened to that soul. Remember, everyone has a story, right? And now at this moment, they're standing in front of you with all of that going inside. And you said something that hit their stuff. And bam, it comes flying out. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them, doesn't it? A person who's happy who feels love and is enjoying their life doesn't yell at you. They may encourage you like a coach can encourage you. Come on, you can do better. That's not yelling at you. That's encouraging you, raising you, working with you. But yelling at you? How dare you? you so (laughs) call your names and stuff? That's them. That's not you. Does anybody understand that? You do understand that, don't you? Have you ever yelled at anybody? Have you noticed that you yelled at them because they did something you didn't like? Well, how did you decide what you like? Some of your learned experiences. Well, don't you dare say that. You sound like my mother. I'm a man. How can I sound like your mother? Did you get along with your mother? Bet not. <laughs> You're doing this. You are determining the quality of your life by how you're handling the experiences, which are just natural experiences. There's nothing you can do about them. The person is the sum of their learned experiences. You're the sum of your learned experiences. Good luck. Because they're totally different experiences. So you wake up. It's not personal. And it's the hardest thing in the new book. I dare to say that. Nothing's personal. Ah! It's not. You're taking it personal because it's hitting your personal stuff. It's hitting the stuff that you stored in there that you couldn't handle. What if it's the stuff that I really liked? You love it. I told you this saint, why you extract the picture in the lower right. She's the one who brought the Durga statue back in the late 70s. Very, very, very high soul. One she turned to me, she was real senior, she doesn't talk personal or anything, but we were close. And she turned to me once, she said, Mickey, Mickey, said, yes, mother, don't you just love when they yell at you? There's so much energy. I love it. <laughs>
there's a lot of energy in there, right? The trouble is, you don't want it. You can't handle it. So inside, you push it away. And what happens? You don't like the person anymore. You don't want to go to work anymore. You make a thing out of it. It's just an event. And there, How many other people were talking or yelling or not yelling out of the 8.5 billion that are on planet Earth at the time you were having that experience? It's just an experience. You happen to be standing. That's why I look at it. The person's not yelling at you. You just happen to be standing in the place where someone's yelling. Well, if you weren't, if you were late, it wouldn't happen. If that person who you said something and yelled at you had received a phone call before they talked to you that they won the lottery and you walked in there and said the exact same thing, they'd laugh. That's funny. And walk away. Right or wrong. Please, I'm begging you. You have to neutralize what you've done to yourself. You've taken these experiences that when they come in, they hit all kinds of garbage inside of you and they feel yicky. And by the way, blog about it. Everyone will agree with you. They'll try to argue mine was worse than yours. <laughs> the society's not helping you much, are they? They're agreeing with you. That's terrible. I can't believe you're still talking or walking. I have you traumatized. Does that happen to me? Right? <laughs> Don't even bother going to a therapist. I tried. It doesn't help. It's reasonable you're depressed. Get depressed. <laughs> so I'm talking a little different. I'm talking honest to you. You stored this stuff inside of you. You do it all the time, every single day. And the big ones are definitely in there. And then people do things or events happen and they remind you of them and they come flying up. You can be driving down the road and see a, a billboard and start crying. Is a reminder. Of something. People say, "Isn't the sunset?" I, I give this example the other day. Everybody liked it. Sunsets are beautiful, aren't they? Can you imagine seeing the beautiful sunset? Well, what if your girlfriend left you when you took her out to see a sunset? And she finally said, "Look, this is really nice, but uh, I've had it with you." And she walked away into the sunset. <laughs> How are you doing with sunsets now for the next twenty years? I'd rather not. Have I exaggerated? I want to know. Have I exaggerated? Wake up. Wake up. So basically, you understand what happened. You couldn't handle a moment that unfolded in front of you, so you resisted it inside, so it stayed inside, like Freud said. Suppression, repression, resistance. I call it resistance. I said, it's just resistance. You're not suppressing the fact that the person didn't use the blinker. You're just resisting it, but it still affects your energy. It affects your energy flow. You get yourself all disturbed by the fact somebody didn't use your blinker or somebody cut you off or whatever the heck it is. So basically, you push it away. It gets stored inside. How many of those do you have, by the way? I forgot to ask you. Probably uh, my example of the billion stars in the galaxy doesn't come close. To how much that stuff do you have inside of you? <laughs> <laughs> you store the moments inside of you that you don't like. Even the little ones and the big ones. And so you have a warehouse of problems inside of you. They're not even happening outside anymore. Please. I know that if you had bad experiences, it's very hard to listen to this. Because it's funny, you don't want to neutralize them. You want everyone to understand how bad they are. Why? Why? Wouldn't you rather have them not be in there? Wouldn't you rather have an experience that's really, really bad and have it be over, and when it's over outside, it's over inside? I asked you a question. Or do you really want to make a big deal out of it just for kicks? I mean, for not kicks. I asked the question again. The event took place, agreed. It stopped taking place. It went away. Your parents got divorced. This person mistreated you. Things happen. Not fair, not right. Not, nobody's saying that. Okay? Just is. It's over. Wouldn't you rather have it be over inside? It bothered you then. Do you want it to bother you for the rest of your life? But you did, didn't you? Because you couldn't handle it. That's what it comes down to. That's what the whole purpose, the bottom, the root of the whole thing, is that you couldn't handle it. But, but no but. If you could handle it, it still have happened. It still would have come in, but it would have passed through. Like the trees and the clouds and every other experience that you had. It's an experience I had. Yeah, yeah, I got fired. I got fired when? 20 years ago. What was happening now? I've been afraid to get a job ever since. I don't get fired again. If I don't have a job, I won't get fired. Ah! No! I got fired. What happened? It was fun. I didn't have to go to work for a while. Is it possible you could do that? But uh, what did you do then? I went to look for jobs. That was fun. I met new people. I got to interview with people. I got better with each interview. It was, it was a really wonderful time in my life. Can you do that? Possibly. I'm not saying can you. Is it 
possible that someone could do that? Wouldn't it be better? Well, then that's the answer, isn't it? That's the answer of how not to have problems. Don't define those problems. Define them as experiences, because that's what they are, aren't they? They're the experience I had at that moment when life was passing before me. If it's a problem, I said it was a problem. Otherwise, it's an experience. Oh, I still got you? I know it's hard because we've had things that really hurt us, haven't we? We have things that really hurt us. I know. I understand. I have total compassion. We all understand. We don't have the same things, but we've all had things that hurt us. I'm just asking you, do you want it to still be hurting you? Because it's not happening anymore. I don't want it to still be hurting you. I like you. Why would I want it to still be hurting you? Yes, of course, what's happening is difficult. But if it's over, I'm not asking not to not to have problems and experience that's happening. Okay? We have to deal with things. I'm only begging you to understand that if it's not happening, it shouldn't be bothering you. If it's not happening, it's bothering you. You did that. I want to talk about how not to do that. That is spiritual growth. Because I'm telling you, when you're done doing that, and the stuff that you stored in there for no reason, there was a reason it happened, but there's no reason to keep it in there, it will come up by itself. Won't it come up by itself? It does come back up, doesn't it? And what do you do when it comes back up? You push it back down. I don't want to deal with this. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with what you said. I can't. I remind me of what my father did. I didn't like my father. Nope, nope. I'm sorry. I cannot deal with this. There you go. And it talk like that. In other words, you push it back down. Maybe what we need to learn to do is to let it go. I don't want this in me. Why? It's painful. And there's no reason for it to be painful because it's not happening. In other words, you stored pain. The event's not happening. You stored pain, didn't you? And now when it tries to come back up, it's painful. And so you push it back down. So the essence of all the spirituality, yes, it's good to meditate. Some people say, Mickey doesn't like meditation. I do, I meditate. I meditate all my life. Meditation is wonderful. Lots of teachers teach you meditation. Lots of techniques, all right? I want to teach you what to do when you're not meditating. Okay? That doesn't mean you shouldn't meditate. That's your business. But I want to teach you what to do when you're not meditating because that's a very big part of your life. And if you will do this, you're going to find out that meditation is spontaneous. You can find out that you're sitting there watching a movie or watching TV or doing something and all of a sudden all the shock to you will come pouring up inside of you. You'll feel like you're completely intoxicated, raised to the highest level. Why? Because that's what's inside of you. The stuff you shoved in there is blocking that. So if you let go of that stuff, that's the highest thing you can do. That's the highest thing you can do is don't put any more in and let go of what's in there. That is the meaning of your life. You have stuff in there, don't you? The purpose of your life is not to make life be so it doesn't hit your stuff. Not to try to get everything you want so you're compensating for the fact that you're not okay. The purpose of your life is letting go of all this garbage that you've stored inside of you and not storing any more and raising yourself. Okay, how do you do that? It comes up, you let it go. I don't know how to. I know you don't. I'm being compassionate. See, if I, if I was a Zen teacher, let it go. But my mommy, let it go. <laughs> okay? But you don't know how to, do you? Wouldn't it be nice if you could? That's all I want to get you to that. Wouldn't it be nice if when it comes up, you can let it go? Bye-bye, Mom. Bye-bye, bad boyfriend. Bye-bye, high school. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye, ex-wife. Bye-bye, ex-husband. Bye-bye. Not? <clears throat> Bye-bye. You don't have to be in here anymore. Would you like that? You don't have to be in here anymore. There's no reason you can't do that except you're not ready. You haven't learned. It's about learning. That's what I'm trying to teach you. You learn all kinds of things. I teach you this all the time. You learn to play the piano. How? By sitting down playing Beethoven? No. By starting with the scales. You learn to sport. How? By playing against the finest team that ever was? No. By practicing. By learning techniques and practicing them, you get better. Why is this not the same? No one will teach you like this. I just don't like that. I can't let go. Well, you haven't learned to let go. You didn't play tennis real well the first time you picked up a racket. You didn't do all kinds of stuff. You learn. Learn this. Learn this. Learn what? Learn how to handle the situations that come inside of you that don't feel so good. And I'll tell you a secret. You can't handle the ones that do feel good. You cling to them. Buddhists have a word called clinging. Oh my God, 
I love what he said to me. It's so beautiful. I've never felt so much love in my life. Where's he going? No, no, st stay here. Stay here for a minute. Say it again. You can't even handle the ones that do feel good. You want them to happen again. And you get upset and you get jealous and insecure. What is that all about? Jealousy, insecurity, need, dependency. I liked it. You don't feel need, dependency, and jealousy about something you didn't like. That's just, there's two sides of the coin. That which you couldn't handle because you didn't like it. You suppress it, you do all you get depressed. And that which you couldn't handle because it doesn't keep happening. And so by the time you're done, basket case. <laughs> you're busy could be trying to avoid stuff you don't want to happen again and trying to get stuff to happen that you want to happen again. You're pretty busy, aren't you? There's nothing going on. I told you. When somebody asked you, what'd you do today? I did a 360 on my axis. What'd you do this year? Big 360. <laughs> I took a trip around the sun, man. I took a lap around the sun. Wake up. Get bigger. Get your consciousness off of the limit of your personal mind. That's what we're talking about. Right now, your awareness of being is locked inside this tiny little mess called the, every problem you ever built inside your mind is bothering you and your heart is limited. Your, your consciousness is locked inside of that. Does it have to be? No. Consciousness can be aware of anything. That's what you're aware of. And so I teach you that one way to expand consciousness is to expand mind. Because consciousness is locked in the mind right now. Eventually it won't be. That's what enlightenment is. When your consciousness no longer is addicted to staring at your tiny little mind made up of your tiny little experiences, when your consciousness does not have to stare at your mind, that's what liberated consciousness is. That's, that's what enlightened beings realize. Mayor Baba said, my consciousness was like a drop of water staring at me. When it stopped, it fell into the ocean. Find it. Find a drop of water once it falls into the ocean. What did Christ say? My Father and I are one. And now you understand what he meant. That's what enlightenment is. is the realization that your consciousness is one with the universe. You're a very great being. What if that's true? And it is. That your consciousness in there, looking at your thoughts, looking at your heart, looking at all this, staring at it, is really the entire universe. My father and I are one. Man is created in the image of God. You hear me? That that's who you are, and look what you're doing with that consciousness. Okay? You are a very great being, but you're staring at something that's not so great, aren't you? And you're trying to make it look great, or be depressed because it's not great. What are you doing? You're way bigger than that. I'm just trying to help you get to a point. Now, one way to do that is if you're staring at your mind, if you'll think about the galaxies and you'll think about how small the planet is and you'll think about the fact that your experiences are nothing, you've expanded your mind to stop being fixated on you. That's a very healthy thing. It's called jnana yoga, yoga of wisdom. It's that you can expand that out. Then your consciousness expands. It's easier to get out if you're not fixated on your own mind and about your ego self. So now how do you learn to do this? You start with the small things. You, that's what I try to teach and I don't know if anybody else does. You don't start with the big things. I know you got stuff in there. Yes, somebody did this to you. Yes, this. Yes. You hear me? Yes. I understand. But I don't want it bothering you for the rest of your life. How about that? I'm your friend. Okay? So I agree it happened. How do you do it? You don't start with that. You can't start with that. That's like saying I never played the piano. I'll play Mozart. No, you won't. Or I'll play the Williams sisters in tennis. I never picked up a racket before. No, you won't. <laughs> you'll get discouraged and you'll leave. So I'm not, don't work with that big stuff. No, don't, don't worry about it. Whew. Don't even worry about it. I know it's in there. You know it's in there. Don't even worry about it. You need to learn how to let go when something is not comfortable. You need to learn how to not resist life. You don't do that by taking everything. You do that with the driver in front of you. It's fun. Make it a game. You can handle the fact that the person is driving 10 miles an hour below the speed limit in the left lane. They didn't use their blinker. Or that their head is looking down at their phone at the stoplight and you have to beep to get them going. It's not a big deal. You can handle that, can't you? You don't, but you could. That's what I want. You can play the scales. Not perfectly, maybe, but you can play the scales. You can handle these little, tiny, stupid little things that happen in life that, by the way, you have no control over. You bother yourself about something that's meaningless and you have no control over it. That's where I want you to work. 
I want you to work at that level where you're just saying, no, this is silly. I'm not going to be bothered with this. How? Sing a song, do a mantra, count, watch your breath, say something nice about the person in front of you before you beep, because they're looking at their phone, sit there and say, oh, always looking at their phone, they're having fun, looking at their phone on the planet Earth. All right, have fun! I started this talk by saying life can be fun or it can be hell. Who's determining? You are. Make it fun. People play video games. I never did. But people have video games, right? And they're shooting things and spaceships and monsters and so on, right? And imagine if the person's so neurotic that if a monster comes, they go, ah! And they, run, and they freak out forever because the monster came out or somebody shot them in the video game. No, you're supposed to be having fun. You're supposed to be having fun. Did you hear me? Earth is God's idea of Disney World. <laughs> There's birds that sing. I go walk through the morning. <laughs> Where did they come from? They're just here. There's all kinds of colors and shapes and sounds, aren't there? Compared to every other planet that we've seen, there's nothing going on. There's not an amoeba. There's not a protozoa. There's nothing. They're not even a roach. Okay? And here there's everything. How many species are there? Ha ha ha. God, wake up. You are ruining your own life. And so you start practicing this thing called acceptance, honoring and respecting the moments that unfold in front of you. But just do it with the little things. You don't think they matter. You think it doesn't matter. What? Oh, it's raining out. I can't believe it's raining. That matters. I love the rain. It makes there be crops so I can eat. You're welcome to use positive thinking. You're welcome to use mantra. You're welcome to use breathing. I don't care. But please don't just do that stupid thing you're doing of letting these things ruin your life. Just more negativity, more negativity, more problems. If you have a nice experience, somebody comes up and says, God, you know, I, I've never said it since we're in kindergarten, but to me, you walk on water. You're just the most beautiful person I've ever met. You're so beautiful, but I'm embarrassed to say it. Okay? Say, that was nice. I wonder what will happen next. Maybe there'll be a nicer thing next, the next moment. Don't cling. That's it. There's, oh my God, I need that. You know why you need that? Because you're not okay inside. If you were okay inside, you'd say, that was fun too. It was raining. Okay, we won't go camping. We'll play tiddlywings. We'll stand outside and watch the raindrops fall. You're welcome to have fun, aren't you? And don't tell me it's not logical. It is logical. What's not logical is what you're doing to yourself. And so you practice letting go. You've heard me use those words before. This is what letting go means. I'm in here. An event's taking place outside, and my mind is complaining about it. Why? Because I stored every single thing inside, and it makes it not okay, and it wants to express itself. That's why your mind complains all the time. People ask me that. Why does that voice talk all the time? And why is it so negative? That's why. Because you stored negativity inside of you, and it wants to release it. It's trying to release it. That's what all that negativity is, all that talk. Oh, what if this happens? Oh, my God, I would die if that happened. Why are you thinking like that? What's the matter with you? Of course you're not going to be okay. Oh, I if I got fired. Oh, my God. He talked about getting fired. I don't want to get fired. I'm, I'm not going to come out to the temple anymore. I, I can't handle what he talks about. Oh, have fun. <laughs> and so you just sit there and say, I'm going to learn to handle things. How? By practicing with the little things. Just doing something positive, something constructive. You can fix this. So you practice with the small things, letting go. And then you're going to find out something a little bigger happens. And you practice letting go so you're better at it. And you start making some decisions. Do I want this to bother me? No, it's bothering you. I'm not saying it's not bothering you. Do I want this to keep bothering me? That's the difference. You're not going to make life so that when it comes in, it's always going to feel wonderful. Somebody once asked Ramakrishna, I can't even say his name, he was so high, one of the highest beings walked the face of the earth, fully enlightened, gone bye-bye. They asked him, does an enlightened being ever feel anger? I bet you would say no. You know, he said yes. He said yes, but it's like riding on water. That's what I've been teaching you. Does riding on water have a problem? The moment you make the mark, it's gone. It comes in, it passes through. You didn't keep it inside. It's not a problem. It's fine. Life has the right to unfold the way it is. The Buddhists say everything has this nature. Not all the natures, when they come in, feel good. A rattling, coiled up rattlesnake. 10 feet away from you, that is not a really pleasant experience. Unless you say, wow, what a rush. <laughs> okay? And then the main part being, when it crawls away, it's over. 
I'm not afraid from now on to walk outside ever in your entire life. I'm going to move into the city. Why, there are no rattlesnakes. <laughs> so you just keep letting go. Yes, it happens. I'm not denying it happens. I give you that. I'm compassionate. I'm so compassionate, I don't want it still to be in there. And so you let it go. You let it go. How? Practice, 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 practice. And first, this is small stuff, and have fun with it. And then something bigger will happen, you'll have fun with that. And then something bigger will happen. And then someday, something will happen at work or in a relationship or like that, and you'll be driving away, and you realize, somebody told me this once, I, I respect it so deeply, and he said, you know, I look back at, that would have bothered me years ago. I didn't even notice it. Oh my God. That's growth. Not that it didn't happen. Not that you made it not happen. It got strong enough to control everybody so it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter that it happens. You're not afraid of life. You're not afraid of relationships. You're not afraid of love. You're not afraid of life. You're not afraid of people. You're not afraid of animals. You're not afraid. Does that mean you don't deal with it? Of course you deal with it. You deal with it. A lion's jumping at you. If somebody asked, asked Master once when they was teaching these kind of teachings, but what if a lion jumps at you? All right? Run. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but what if somebody's driving in front of you that's not nice? Don't get out with a gun and man, have road rage or don't freak out. Let go, I'm begging you. Do you understand? Is it logical to you now, right? And don't forget, everything you're doing is on this tiny little six foot by three foot square. You're standing on the planet in the middle of nowhere freaking yourself out. How about we stop doing that? That's how you change the world. You change yourself. If you do this everywhere you walk, You'll raise everything around you. That's how you change the world. One person at a time. You. Oh, Jagger.